There are so many different elements and compounds that react together in amazing ways, and these scientific experiments look like a lot of fun, with sometimes explosive results. So put on your safety glasses, because here are the top 15 most cool-looking science experiments. Number 15. Sodium and Hydrochloric Acid Sodium is an element that most people are familiar with after seeing an experiment under controlled circumstances in a laboratory where a small piece is added to water. It's a violent reaction that can on occasion end with an explosion. But this isn't the most volatile that the soft metal can be. It's likely you haven't seen this experiment in school, because this is what happens when you add sodium to another dangerous substance, concentrated hydrochloric acid. In fact, sodium reacts vigorously with any halogen acid, such as this one, and immediately begins to give off huge amounts of heat. During the reaction, salt and hydrogen gas is produced, but if there's enough sodium present, it can also react with the vapors to produce flashes of light, a process that's called chemoluminescence. It's a far riskier experiment than putting sodium into water, but if done correctly, it can be much more impressive. Number 14. Trapping Lightning Electrical discharges, such as the ones from the atmosphere that we call lightning, can look absolutely spectacular. But because they can travel at the speed of light, they're only present for a split second before the energy is moved on. There is, however, an experiment that can be used to seemingly trap electricity in place and, and create what's known as a Lichtenberg figure. If you've ever seen a spot where lightning has struck the ground, you may well have noticed the branching scorch marks that have been left behind, and essentially the creation of one of these objects is encouraging a charge to do the same. The best way to make one is by starting with an insulating material, such as acrylic or glass, and then using an electron beam accelerator to direct a beam of high-speed electrons towards it. They'll easily pass through the first part of the object, but will begin to rapidly decelerate as they collide with the molecules inside of it. Momentarily, the electrons become trapped, and as more enter the object, the amount of trapped charges continue to build until the effective charge is many millions of volts. At this point, the electric stress will exceed the resistance of the plastic or acrylic and will cause some parts to become conductive, which is a process known as dielectric breakdown. This leads to the formation of branch-like structures, which allow the electrons to escape in a flash, and the electric sparks that are generated leave further branched patterns behind. Number 13. Bleeding Iron We usually think of iron as being a relatively stable substance, albeit one that can rust, and that's why it's often used for construction and other purposes where its relative inertness is a desirable trait. If you expose it to certain chemicals, however, it can behave in an unexpected way and reacts much faster than you would think, considering it normally takes a long time for it to rust in the presence of water. Known as the bleeding iron experiment, you begin with a 3% hydrogen peroxide solution and then add a quantity of ammonium thiocyanate and a few drops of concentrated hydrochloric acid. Once this is fully mixed, you then lower some iron into the solution and the reaction will take place almost immediately, virtually making it appear as if the iron has begun to bleed. What's actually happening is that at first, the outer layers of the iron are dissolving in the hydrochloric acid, which forms iron chloride. Next, the iron-2 ion that's released during this is oxidized by the hydrogen peroxide to form iron-3, and then this reacts with a thiocyanate ion to produce iron thiocyanate, which is the crimson-red color that you see. What you're actually looking at here is three experiments in one that happen in sequence for the result. To make it even more impressive, you can do this with iron shapes, such as stars or hearts, but because of the dangerous chemicals involved, this is an experiment you should only try under close supervision by an expert. Number 12. Red Phosphorus and Chlorine Phosphorus is a relatively common element within the Earth's crust, and while in nature it's fairly stable because it exists in compounds, the element itself is quite unstable and can be very volatile in the right conditions. When it's first extracted, it exists as white phosphorus, but if you heat it to around 572 degrees Fahrenheit or 300 degrees Celsius, then it'll turn into red phosphorus. This is normally far more stable than the white version, but if you combine it with chlorine or bromine, then things soon get explosive. When you try and mix it with liquid chlorine, it'll start to burn as soon as it makes contact with the vapor. It'll begin to burn with either a bright white or orange flame, depending on the concentration of the chlorine, and will produce a thick white vapor. 
During this reaction, a large quantity of corrosive and toxic fumes are created, which is why it's rarely done in demonstrations, and if you ever plan on doing so yourself, it must be under the supervision of an experienced chemist and in a well-ventilated place. Accidentally inhaling the chlorine or other vapors that are produced here will almost certainly lead to severe respiratory issues. Number 11. Melting Aluminum in a Magnet Aluminum is an extremely stable and malleable material, which makes it ideal for constructing relatively lightweight objects that need to retain their rigidity. But like with all substances, when it's exposed to the right conditions, it can behave in an entirely different way. As you're probably aware, it's not normally magnetic, and this is due to the arrangement of its electrons that essentially obstruct any magnetism. There are ways, though, that you can get it to react with magnetic fields, and the results can be amazing. In this example, there's a homemade copper coil that's been made into a solenoid, and it's functioning as an induction heater. It has an electrical current passing through it, and this creates an alternating magnetic field within the cylinder. When the piece of aluminum is placed into it, it creates what are known as eddy currents inside the metal, and it causes it to act in a magnetic way. The eddy currents create their own magnetic fields within the structure of the aluminum and repel the external forces that result in it hovering in place. That's impressive enough, but if the experiment is allowed to run long enough, another phenomenon begins to take place, called joule heating, and this eventually causes the aluminum to melt while still floating in position. Number 10. Thermite and Ice Thermite is a compound that's made up of a metal powder and a metal oxide, and can be made in a variety of different ways, with different chemical components that give a range of properties. It's thermite, for example, that sometimes is used for welding railway tracks because of the way that it undergoes an extreme endothermic reaction when it's exposed to an ignition source. While most thermites aren't explosive as such, they will produce huge amounts of heat. And this reaction can be triggered by the most unlikely of sources. Mixing it with water can cause a steam explosion, and the same is true if it's exposed to ice. In the experiment, thermite is placed in a metal can on top of ice, and it's lit with an igniter. Instead of simply reaching extreme temperatures like it would normally, it reacts with the freezing ice below and explodes in a fireball. The exact mechanism behind this effect isn't fully understood, but it's been replicated a number of times, and if anything, proves just how dangerous the substances can be. Number 9. Iodine and Magnesium Powder Magnesium is famous for the way that it burns with an incredibly bright white light if it's lit, but it's otherwise relatively stable. Whereas iodine, while it can be corrosive and toxic, is considered to be stable and is used in a number of different ways, including in some medications. When the two are in powder form and mixed together, however, the stage is set for an amazing reaction, and all that's left is the need to add a few drops of water. The result is a vigorous reaction that produces huge plumes of purple smoke and heat, but amazingly, this is just because of the iodine and magnesium interacting with each other and has nothing to do with the hydrogen or oxygen in the water. The only problem with instigating the experiment is that the two elements need to be very close to one another. When the water is added, it absorbs some of the iodine so it can make closer contact with the magnesium and start the process. Once magnesium iodide begins to form, some is also dissolved into the water, which allows for further iodine to be absorbed, so the reaction continues to speed up until it's all gone. Number 8. Zinc and Sulfur Zinc is a stable and extremely useful bluish-white metal that is an essential part of many batteries, rubbers, alloys, and in the process of galvanizing iron. And you're probably aware of sulfur, which is a yellow-colored non-metal that is actually the fifth most common element on Earth. On their own, each may seem unassuming, but the fact that they both react so well with other elements means that they're virtually an ideal partnership. The two can be mixed relatively safely, but once a heat source is applied to them, things become far more exciting. The reaction taking place here is the creation of zinc sulfide, but in the process of this huge amount of gas, heat, and colorful light, is also produced along with small quantities of zinc oxide and sulfur dioxide. These gases are potentially dangerous if anyone were to breathe them in, but the important thing about this reaction is how quickly it takes place and the force at which the gas is released. It can be used as a basic type of rocket fuel and is often a preferred method by rocket enthusiasts for test flights of small launch vehicles. Number 7. The Supercooled Levitating Magnet 
If you've ever tried to balance a magnet in the air above a metallic object, you'll know that it's virtually impossible to find a place where it will stay, let alone be able to touch it or spin it afterwards. But there's a cool experiment you can do with a magnet, a conducting surface and some liquid nitrogen that'll look like magic. The mechanism behind how this works is called quantum levitation, and it's one of the strange effects in the world of quantum physics. By coating the conductor with liquid nitrogen, its temperature plummets, and this means that the motion of the electrons within it significantly slow down. The result of this is that the magnetic fields that would usually pass through it are instead repelled, so the ones being emitted by the magnet above it are forced to move around it. The conductor, which is now acting as a superconductor, essentially repels the magnet despite not technically having a magnetic charge of its own, and means that the magnetic cube will float above it. As you can see, it's easily manipulated too, and can even be spun, meaning the conductor below is counteracting the changing magnetic poles of the magnet as fast as it can move around. Number six, trimethyl borate fire. Trimethyl borate is a substance that's created by heating boric acid with ethanol, which essentially purifies it and produces a colorless liquid. It's a compound that's often used as a dehydrating agent, a fungicide, or as a solvent for waxes, resins, and oil. And if you've ever used it for these purposes, you'll be more than aware that its packaging comes with warnings to keep it away from flames. That's because the liquid is highly flammable, but creates a stunning green flame when it's set alight. There are very few things that can make a pure green fire like this without other colors appearing. But if you do this, you'll need to make sure it's in a well-ventilated area. That's because the reaction causes trimethyl borate to decompose and produce a large volume of toxic fumes that include boron oxides. Number five, carbon disulfide and nitrous oxide. Most experiments are impressive by the visuals that they produce, but when you mix carbon disulfide with nitrous oxide, you'll not only be in for a stunning display of light, but also an unexpected sound. To do this properly, you need to mix the two chemicals in a cylindrical tube and then ignite it. This causes the carbon disulfide to act as a fuel and the nitrous oxide to act as an oxidizing agent, and the result is a combustion process that makes a huge amount of heat and sulfur. The colorful flames that occur are made by a region of extremely hot, luminous gas that are the product of the reactants decomposing. But the extraordinary thing is the sound that it creates, which is reminiscent of a dog's bark, hence why the experiment is usually called the barking dog reaction. As with all experiments, the heat and explosive force that's created is potentially dangerous, and it's gone wrong on a number of occasions. Probably the most famous of these took place in 1853, when Justice von Liebig, a German scientist, was conducting the experiment to entertain the Bavarian royal family. While things began as planned, he added too much of the reacting agents for the glass cylinder to handle, and the glass shattered. Queen Theresa, the wife of the Bavarian king, as well as the prince and Liebig all suffered minor injuries as the small shards of glass flew across the room and caused abrasions on their faces and hands. Number four, gallium and aluminum. At room temperature, gallium is a soft, silvery looking metal but at just above room temperature, it melts into a liquid. This means it's often used as an environmental alternative to mercury. But gallium has some rather unusual properties of its own. When it's in its liquid form, it gains the ability to destabilize other metals because of the way that it diffuses into their lattice structure and can turn otherwise solid objects into something that's extremely brittle. It can be fun to use this for this purpose because of the ability to turn it into liquid by simply holding it in your hand. But extreme care is needed because the effects can be extremely damaging. One of the metals it's particularly effective on is aluminum, which as you know is used to make a range of different products from soda cans to very expensive computer equipment. When gallium comes into contact with aluminum, it infiltrates the crystal structure and turns it into a degenerate alloy in virtually no time at all. What was once a strong material will now simply crumble away with the slightest of touches and almost seems unbelievable when it's used to make a computer fall to pieces or when it's applied to a soda can, which will fall apart on its own due to the pressure of the gas inside. Number three, cesium and water. Cesium is by far the most reactive of all alkali metals, which is the group that contains potassium and sodium known best for one of its isotopes, cesium-137, which is used for nuclear fission, and also when it's combined with formic acid to produce cesium-formate that's used as a drilling fluid. 
probably the most spectacular experiment that involves it can be achieved using the pure metal itself. You'll be familiar with how sodium and perhaps even potassium react when small amounts are added to water, but the explosive power of cesium when the same thing happens is on a whole different level. It's so highly reactive that it'll ignite simply by being exposed to the air, which is why it always has to be stored in oil. And while sodium's explosiveness in water usually depends on how warm it is, there's no such difference with cesium. It will react with ice at temperatures as low as negative 177 degrees Fahrenheit, and when it's dropped into liquid water, it'll explode virtually instantaneously. This results in the strange situation whereby a similar sized piece of sodium can actually create a larger explosion because it reacts slower and allows time for a buildup of hydrogen. If there's enough cesium to allow a significant volume of hydrogen to form above it, however, the heat produced will ignite the gas too, and the explosion will be significantly magnified. It's so quick and highly dangerous that it's classified as an extremely hazardous material and is a highly controlled substance. Because of its reactivity, it's not naturally present in nature and has to be created artificially, which surely can only be a good thing. Number 2. Nitrogen Triiodide Throughout history, mainly for military purposes, scientists have researched and discovered a number of different explosive agents. Nitrogen triiodide is probably one of the most reactive of them all. The reason you rarely ever hear of it is because it's so unstable, there's virtually no way to effectively weaponize it. Still, when handled in controlled situations, it makes for one of the most impressive explosive reactions of all. It's made up of one atom of nitrogen to three atoms of iodine and was first discovered at the beginning of the 20th century. It's produced by reacting iodine with ammonia, but is highly unstable straight away because of the pressure at which the large iodine atoms are held against the relatively small nitrogen one. They're almost bursting to be free, and this means the compound has an extremely low activation energy to trigger its decomposition, so much so that it's impossible to store and transport it, let alone harness in any meaningful way. Something as gentle as touching it with a feather, a gentle breeze, or even being touched by a laser light is enough to trigger the powerful explosion, and it is also the only known chemical substance that can be detonated by radioactive alpha particles. When it's triggered, it releases a huge amount of energy, with the iodine atoms breaking their bonds, and the result is the production of nitrogen gas and iodine. Visually, you'll see large plumes of purple smoke, which is made up of iodine particles, and there's no doubt that it's incredibly impressive, even with tiny amounts of the substance. Number 1. The Oscillating Clock Normally, when you conduct a scientific experiment, you'll expect two or more elements to react with one another to create something new. And once this has happened, it's finished. There are some, though, that will continue changing state for prolonged periods of time. And the most famous is called the briggs rauscher reaction, or the oscillating clock. There's only a small number of these types of oscillating reactions, and they almost defy logic, but once you understand the science behind what's happening, then it should make complete sense. You begin with a solution that's made up of hydrogen peroxide and iodate, a catalyst like manganese, an unreactive acid such as sulfuric acid, an organic compound that will react with the iodine, like malonic acid, and some starch to indicate the presence of iodine. To begin with, this mixture will be clear, but it will begin to slowly turn to an amber color and then will suddenly turn dark blue. Soon this color will fade and it will become see-through once more, before repeating the cycle as many as 10 times before finally settling as a dark blue. It's known as an oscillating reaction because it keeps changing states and reverting back to how it started, and this has all to do with the complex ways in which each of the chemicals are interacting. There are two main reactions that are taking place. The first is the way that the malonic acid consumes the free iodine and produces an iodide ion, and the second, which is the way the manganese and free radicals convert the hydrogen peroxide and iodate into free iodine and oxygen. The second process can only happen in low concentrations of iodide, however, which means that when it begins, the liquid starts to turn amber in color. But once the concentration is high enough, it'll stop, and the first process turns the free iodine into an iodide ion which is when the liquid turns blue. Eventually, though, as this continues, the concentration of iodide will fall to a low enough level again, and the second process restarts, which reverts the color of the liquid. The oscillations only stop in the end once the consumable elements have all been used up, and if you were to continue refilling these, the color changes would keep on happening indefinitely.
Watch our binge watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.